Well, hello, everyone, and hope you are enjoying a blessed Yule. It's Tuesday, the 21st, and today is the first day of Yule. Christmas will be coming in just a few more, so hang in there. Now, I've been busy. This morning, I just wrapped up, I think I wrapped up the editing on a video. I'm going to review it here in a little bit. If, and if it's, if it's good, I'll uh, put it out there. So far, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. I mean, that's, that's just the personal bias, of course. But, uh, yeah, this kind of reminds me of an indie film or so. Minorly. An amateur indie film, let's put it that way. But it has aspects of something like that, in a way. And I, I found this song. I don't know. It's probably been a hit for ages or so. But uh, I, I found this song on YouTube, and it just fit so perfectly so that should be released hopefully later on today and then um i don't have a segment for today but i should have one for tomorrow because i'm working on some beneficial well, I would call them herbs, but they're, they're resins this time. I'm doing resins. So you can look forward to that, hopefully tomorrow, if I can get my research all together. And I don't know why I'm just sitting here talking when I should be uh, shuffling. I have added a few little added touches to uh, my Christmas decorations. I, uh, well, I've been using dried pink grapefruit. Well, ruby red grapefruit are the best because they show the best color. But you, uh, you slice them as thin as you can without cutting through and uh, dehydrate them and hang them on your tree and they look like little stained glass pieces of round stained glass windows or so. Um, and then this year I got the idea, well, if I can do that, why couldn't I take a regular white grapefruit and put it in some food coloring and water and dye it to get uh, other colors. And I did, and I'm very happy with the results. I'll have to show you here. Maybe I'll film it and add it to the end of this reading. This one kept sliding. So I'm a thinking. Okay. This morning's card will be the chariot. The chariot stands for the gathered strength prepared to take the great bleed forward. It shows that we prepare ourselves from familiar surroundings in order to go our own way. The driving forces involved are the urge for freedom, ambition, the search for paradise lost, or simply our need for recognition. The victor's chariot represents not only the powers setting off or pressing onwards, but also the skill of the charioteer in maintaining the inner and outer balance. Since the hero and the chariot aim for that external point of wanting, but the grail and the background represent the inner goal, feeling. We see here how well the connection works when the center of the wanting is in harmony with the higher self. The chariot stands 
for a still young but strong self-confidence, letting go of assumed concepts, developing one own suitable conception of the world, and for the clever step of penetrating even difficult problems. This is frequently a matter of overcoming inner contradictions, such as gulf between feeling and thinking, will and instinct, wish and reality. This challenge becomes even more distinct in association with questions of self-awareness. The symbolism of the grail chalice becomes the focus here. It is a symbol of wholeness which, as a myth teaches us, refers beyond ourselves to God. This result in the map used in the search for the highest good and shows that the path there does not lead along the way of sanctimoniousness, flight from reality, or intellectual cleverness. Instead, it is the path of the warrior, a holy warrior, who directs his collected strength toward the goal and follows his path with imperturbable persistence. This card can also contain a warning. The self must be developed before following the path to overcome the self. This is so frequently overlooked that many believe the path to enlightenment lies in avoiding the ego. However, when an ego that is too weak comes into contact with the divine self, a calamity occurs. An inflation of the ego or deep damage follows. The first case can be seen in relation to the many self-proclaimed gurus who mistake their contents of the divine self for the contents of their egos. From that point on, they give unilluminated sermons that they clothe in white. The damage is told by myths in the form of plummeting sons of the gods, Icarus and Pathion. The Grail epic also tells of this in the figure of Amphortus, the dying fisher king who has been injured by a premature encounter with the self. In the area of profession, this card shows us that we have taken a decisive step forward, most likely the courageous step forward toward self-employment. It is simultaneously a warning against overestimation of oneself and recklessness, as well as constraint challenging all professional activities and new beginnings to examine the extent to which those goals are in harmony with our goals in life and ultimately with our higher self. In our personal relationships, the chariot can indicate the beginning of a new partnership, sometimes bringing it a separation from familiar surroundings that is too careless. It can, however, also mean that there is a fresh wind blowing within a matured relationship that clears away signs of fatigue as well as overturning some customary routines and things taken for granted. On the emotional level, however, this card goes much deeper. Here is a matter of creating a type of axis that allows both partners to be in a true relationship with the other person and also in harmony with their own higher self. In addition, this card warns against impatience and challenges us to Clarity and clear objectives. Okay, associated fragrances are cedar, cypress, and cardamom. Gems are the garnet. The ten stars on the armor of the charioteer, the inheritance of divine dew from his mother, are property star sapphires for Crowley. Here's a couple of quotations. Somehow we know deep within our souls the direction we are to take. But very often that buffoon, which we call the ego, makes such a fuss that we cannot hear the inner voice. He who knows his true self considers life to be a wagon wheel rolling by. So there you have it. And boy, that was a mouthful and a half, I'll tell you. I'm long-winded, but I'm not that long-winded. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you all got something out of that. Keep your egos in check, I guess is what it's saying. 
That's what my takeaway from it is. Anyway, now here's some clips of uh, the finishing touches on those decorations that I did. Okay, so for a final touch on here, Albert added some pine garland across the front. And that kind of hides the lines on the, the Santas and stuff. And I think it just looks so much better. And now over here on the tree, there's those grapefruit I was talking about. Star is still not lit up. It's It's got to be, you got to climb up there and hit the battery pack for that. But yeah, I dyed them. That's natural. There I did an orange. Over there you can see an orange. I dyed that one red. That looks like a hibiscus flower. Um, let's see. There's a blue one. They don't show up quite as much. And then I have a purple one up over there I did. It's not too much different color from the... But the red ones look really nice. Dyed red. And I could have probably made them lighter blue if I wanted. But I thought that just filled up the tree and just... That was just the final touch I was looking for. Let me back up here. So there you have it. Now that's the final touches. It, oh, you put garland around the, the doorway too. Going into the room. I forgot about that. But no more. No more. That's, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> so, there you have it. All right, so I want to thank you all for coming by. Have a blessed Yule once again, a blessed Tuesday for everyone else, and peace. Believe. And until tomorrow, bye-bye. Oh, and keep an eye out for that video dropping later. It ought to be a good one. Okay, okay, make a bunny rabbit.